King of Sports. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Absolute jam-packed episode of New Japan Strong. Hi, everybody. It's Kevin Kelly and Alex Kozlov on the call. Thank you so much for joining us. And we have three hellacious matches. Alex first. It's the semifinals of Tag Team Turbulence. Match number one, the West Coast Wrecking Crew against Chris Dickinson and Big Bad Brody King. So we have the West Coast Wrecking Crew versus Violence Unlimited. This is gonna be super violence for all of our entertainment. I cannot wait for them to take each other out. Semi-final number two features Yuji Nagata and Ren Narita against the Good Brothers, Machine Gun Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows. Come on, pick a winner. Can Nagata and Narita stop the madness of talk and shop mania as it has invaded New Japan Strong? Oh, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen there. The winners advance to next week's finale, but folks, our main event gets even bigger. Filthy Tom Lawler defends the strong open weight championship against the legend himself, Satoshi Kojima. The legend himself, Kojima, wants to recapture that past glory and challenge the number one guy in New Japan Strong. We'll find out what happens. Let's kick it off with the semifinals of Tag Team Turbulence. <laughs> Opening match, Tag Team Turbulence Tournament Jun Kesshosen. Jikan Musegen, Ippon Shobo Koremas. The stakes could not be higher for the four teams remaining in Tag Team Turbulence. The semi final round. An opportunity for two relative unknowns here to make their mark on a big stage and advance to the finals. I think, Alex, it might be a surprise to you, to me, to the fans. The only two people that would not be surprised is Jorel Nelson and Royce Isaacs, the West Coast Wrecking Crew themselves. Well, they've certainly been on the tear since making their debut here at New Japan Strong. And then the T3 tournament already advancing, beating Kevin Knight and DKC. And this challenge will be their biggest. They are a rough and rugged team. They will take liberties with the rules. They have a reckless style, puts themselves potentially in harm's way, but it also can really put their opponents in bad, bad positions. How can they isolate? How can they take advantage? That will be the key for no success. Heroes, no villain. Just violence. Violence. Dirty Daddy Chris Dickinson, Big Bad Brody King, Violence Unlimited. Semi-final number one, 
Let the violence begin. Man, I am psyched, Alex. Yeah, this is gonna be a tough one to call. Violence Unlimited advanced beating an already strong team like J.R. Kratos and Daniel Limelight. Facing up against the West Coast Wrecking Crew. It's gonna be violent. I will give you a, a reason why Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson could pull the upset. In their first round, Brody King, Chris Dickinson, super motivated for revenge against Team Filthy. They have a potential by winning this match of going to the finals. Is there a danger that Violence Unlimited overlooks West Coast ranking crew even a little bit? Well, I think that, first of all, we got to take a look at West Coast Wrecking Crew. They've been a team longer than Chris Dickinson and Brody King. That's they a great know, point. They know each other very well. They know how to work together. Chris Dickinson is still probably having to ice his Yaitza after Limelight car carried out a hit on behalf of Tom Lawler for not showing Tim Filthy enough respect. Right, the Yaitza. Well, the bell sounds and we're underway. Brody King's probably still uh, having separation anxiety with the Riggle Twinsies, still stranded on the other side of the globe. Royce Isaac starts with Chris Dickinson. This match begins on the mat. Comfort zone for both. Nick Bonanno, our official here for semifinal number one. What an hour we've got here on New Japan Strong. Two semifinal matches in Tag Team Turbulence and a strong open weight championship match. Folks, you cannot ask for more. Royce Isaacs with a tremendous amateur background, and both guys have certainly studied quite a bit of Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well, Alex. They're very good mat technicians. They're filling each other out, and now Chris Dickinson taking Royce to the corner. Who's going to be the first to push the pace? Who's going to be the first to create their own opportunity? Isaac's looking for an opening. Dickinson slides in, tries to pick the ankle of Royce, who has good defense on the ground. And now ringing up the left arm. How quickly will each team look to tag? How wild will they get? How much risk will they take? These are some of the questions that I've been pondering about this, our first semifinal match in Tag Team Turbulence. Dickinson now trying to ring the left arm and the pump handle. Puts pressure on the bicep. And now Isaac's trying to step in and reverse things. He'll look to do some damage to Dickinson's left arm, who rolls through and puts Royce right back in the same position to, again, jam that bicep directly into his trap, hoists him over, Royce kicks out, Dickinson hits the ropes, rolls through, and the boots of the midsection. Dickinson quicker to the punch there. Royce slings him into the ropes, and the elbow puts him down. I like the comfort level with which Royce Isaacs is competing. And now we'll see how the changeup works here with the tag. And this is where their strength lies in this tag team work right here. There you see some of the tag team continuity, yeah, from the West Coast Wrecking Crew. Nelson, the legal man, the tag, and uh, a count of two before Chris Dickinson kicks out. Brody King already starting to get tense on the apron. And the longer that the West Coast Wrecking Crew can press the numbers advantage and keep Chris Dickinson in there, I think that will certainly help their fortunes. And this is a smart strategy to isolate Chris Dickinson and keep the big monster on the apron. Swing and a miss, Dickinson up, back suplex, no, rolled right to the corner. Oh, and let the violence begin with Brody King. Yeah, nothing doing, pal. Nelson now steps back. Nobody home. Brody on his horse. Nelson catches him. Jarrell Nelson, second rope. Oh, Alex, that was supposed to put Brody King down. Well, Jarrell Nelson just found out what a brick wall Brody King is. And Nelson crying out in pain as Brody King now 
Turns it up. Oh! Here comes Brody King, head of Steve Centon. The team of Violence Unlimited, born in Ring of Honor, a cover to... You've got the Pure Division in Ring of Honor. You've got the Code of Honor. Brody felt that one of the things that Ring of Honor was built on was violence. So he hearkened back to the good old days as he said it. And he brought Chris Dickinson and Homicide in along with himself to really ramp up the violence in ROH. And it's paying dividends here in New Japan Strong. Semi-finals of the Tag Team Turbulence. Chris Dickinson. Chris Dickinson shaking off that leg as he took some punishment earlier from the West Coast Wrecking Crew. Yeah, got a dragon screw leg whip, and he might look to answer with one of his own here. Drags it back out the center, and that's exactly what Dickinson does. A little receipt, if you will. And could be looking for the submission with the single leg crab. What's the difference, really? How does the single leg crab target different muscles as opposed to the full Boston crab, Alex? I think that the angle at which you, uh, you apply that submission, the single leg crab, you have a little bit more freedom. As your opponent moves, you can move with him Five and continue to apply that pressure. Five minutes. And Dickinson stays on the body part. And it would be the leg of Jarrell Nelson. And now slinging Nelson back into the corner and another tag. This is a worst case scenario for the West Coast Wrecking Crew to have Violence Unlimited isolate one of their own and begin to develop some multiple tags and some double team offense like this here. And this is really the only way that the Violence Unlimited has a chance against the team that's been together for so long. The that is West Coast Wrecking Crew. And so far, they're working really well as a, uh, as a team. They, they've come prepared because the stakes I are I wonder high. if you're, listen, Alex, I wonder if your fascination with Team Filthy is the reason why you may be given Violence Unlimited the short shrift here. I, I don't know. I think Brody King and Chris Dickinson, even though they don't have the tag experience, you know, they're proven on this big stage. They're very good. As singles wrestlers, they have proven that, but they've been well, a team that? for such a short amount of time. But right now, they're working very well together, very impressive, and things are not looking good for the West Coast Wrecking Crew, the way it's no, looking right now. And look at that Boston Crab by the big monster. That will break your back. Royce Isaacs punching away at Brody King, who finally just lets go of the hold on Jarrell Nelson more out of annoyance than anything else. Thankfully, he let go of that Boston Crab. Yeah, that, again, mission accomplished. The key for Isaacs there was to get his opponent, or get his partner out of that hold, and he got it done. My goodness. Oh! Jarrell Nelson is going to have to be quicker and get out of harm's way against the slower stronger monster there is Brody King. Yeah, we have yet to really see Jarrell Nelson fire and use a lot of his explosiveness, and this might take what fight is left in him out. If this superplex goes according to Brody King's plan, it could be lights out for the West Coast Wrecking Crew, but Jarrell Nelson sacrificing his own skull to drive Brody King back. And now there's some of that leaping ability. This time he was able to take him down with that Ooh. tackle off the top. Wait a minute, though, Alex. He may have separated his shoulder. Whether on the collision with Brody or the landing on the mat, Jarrell Nelson may have injured his left shoulder and the tag to Royce Isaacs, the tag to Dickinson. And Jarrell Nelson is going to need some time on the outside. That means Royce Isaacs is going to have to carry this battle here. Well, trading shots with Chris Dickinson is not smart. We have seen the knockout power of Chris Dickinson. No doubt about it. Isaacs reversed into the ropes underneath the clothesline. Here comes Isaac. Delivers a clothesline of his own. So as Royce Isaacs is getting going, it allows his partner, Jarrell Nelson, to recuperate from what appeared to be Look at that jackhammer, deadlift jackhammer. Two and a near fall, almost. Again, the winning team advances to the finals of Tag Team Turbulence next week right here on New Japan Strong. All right, so Jarrell Nelson gave Isaacs the okay. No benefit of a tag. And they connect. The double team, will it pay off two? Oh, oh my God. no! Brody, Brody King, King barely makes it in time and breaks that pin. That could have been it. 
He looked like the witch, wicked witch of the West getting a house dropped on her. That's what Royce Isaacs looked like. Oh, the boot from Brody King puts Isaacs down. Come on, referee. Get Brody King out of the ring. He's not even the legal man. All right, now Dickinson hits the roll. Oh, look at this wheelbarrow. Are you wow. kidding me? Oh, leg hook. Two Ooh. and a kick out by Isaac. That was a close call. I got to say I'm very impressed with Violence Unlimited, the way that they're working as a team. I mean, that's the only way that they can beat West Coast Wrecking Crew. Dragging him closer to Brody King now, who yes. might be looking to end it. Up on the shoulders. Isaacs wriggles off the hook. The waist lock on Brody. Standing switch. And there's a standing switch from Isaacs. Now back in the little blue corner. Nelson clips him, tags himself in. So we'll see how sound that left arm is. Oh, 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 oh and there goes Nelson flying after the German suplex low bridge. Out goes Isaacs. I don't know how Isaacs was able to even lift Brody King up for that. Impressive. He transitioned from a dragon suplex to a German suplex. And now Dickinson... Ten minutes have elapsed. Ten minutes. Oh! Black hole slam there. Massive lariat by Brody King. Cover two, and it's over. What a match. Five, ten minutes and 13 seconds. Here are your winners. Advancing to the finals of the tag team The team of Chris Dickinson and Brody. Chris Dickinson with the assist, pulling Royce Isaacs down and making sure that he could not help his partner as Brody King finished the deal. Violence Unlimited has advanced to the finals. Who will join them? Semi-final number two coming up next. Yuji Nagata and Ren Narita versus the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows, Machine Gun, Carl Anderson. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Woo! The West Coast wrecking crew ran into the West Coast. Wrecking ball. <laughs> we shattered your guys' chances at the finals. Come on, Chris. Isaacs, I'm gonna be honest with you right now. I'm gonna be honest with everybody. Royce Isaacs is a training partner of mine. On the mats, in the dojo, in the He's gym. Legit. That guy is a legitimate athlete. He's legit. And so is his partner. Boy, these, guy, these guys came here to win. We only deal with the best. I said it once, I'll say it again. This is the most competitive atmosphere in professional wrestling, but but that's two for us, and we're going to the finals. Set them up, knock them down. Don't matter, good brothers. If it's Narita and Nagata, who I've already dealt with before, there's honor in violence, and we are Violence Unlimited. The first year, Tag Team Turbulence Tournament and Jun Kesho Sen, the time limit is one point of the match. Violence Unlimited has already advanced to the finals of Tag Team Turbulence. Who will join them? It is a guarantee that Violence Unlimited will have to face a former New Japan Pro Wrestling champion. Will it be the former Tag Team Champions, former World Tag League winners, the Good Brothers, Machine Gun Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows, or the former multiple champion, Yuji Nagata, one of the all-time greats, Ren Narita, the on-excursion partner of Yuji Nagata, but familiar foe indeed for these two who have returned to New Japan Pro Wrestling and look to win Tag Team Turbulence right off the bat. Former three-time IWGP Tag Team Champions, two-time Raw Tag Team Champions, Impact World Tag Team Champions, successful podcast talking chub. I mean, these guys like to kick ass and chew bubble gum and drink a little beer. These guys have done it all. 
and it's so exciting for any fan to be seeing their return. The only thing you said wrong there, Alex, was drink a little beer. Oh, that's true. They're gonna get hot. Machine Gun Carl Anderson and the Dangly Daddy. The Big LG. Here comes Blue Justice Ren Narita. Oh, I cannot wait for semifinal number two. You couldn't have a bigger contrast in styles between the two teams. Narita! Alright, so Yuji Nagata, Ren Narita against Machine Gun Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. Obviously, Yuji Nagata, part of the Hontai faction, and has had more than his fair share of issues with Bullet Club over the years. Ren Narita, I don't think, was even in the dojo system. No, he wasn't. He was probably still in high school when uh, Gallows and Anderson made their last appearance in New Japan, Alex. Who has the advantage? I would imagine that it would be the Good Brothers, right? Absolutely. The Good Brothers have been a successful tag team for a long time. And the, the fact that they're facing somebody like a Yuji Nagata who's done it all, they have a, a young lion. That is uh, Ren Narita, who has definitely done everything right as a student of the game and has taken full advantage of this excursion that he's been on. You know, of course, his biggest win over Chris Dickinson uh, in one of the biggest upset victories, some would say, in all of New Japan's strong history. But they need to, the Good Brothers, I would think, need to isolate Ren Narita, the less experienced one, isolate him and put the work on him keeping Yuji Nagata out and get that magic killer and advance to the finals. And Machine Gun Carl Anderson starting with Ren Narita. Of course, Machine Gun Carl Anderson, not just tag team success with Doc Gallows, but also uh, a hugely successful team with Giant Bernard. Anderson, also a G1 finalist, G1 Climax Tournament finalist in 2012. Who did he face that night? Not too far removed from his excursion Kazuchiko Kata. That's right. Carl Anderson has definitely been a very successful singles wrestler himself. You know, having wins over Tanahashi and Shinsuke Nakamura. He's done it all. And he's found so much more success when he found Doug Gallows. The amount of success everywhere around the world that they've been. They've been able to capture championships. Tao Nobo tie-up. Red Narita taking the left arm of the veteran Gallows. And ringing up the left arm is Renderita. Will he look for a tag, get Yuji Nagata in? No, first going to work on that left arm of the machine gun. You know, when you travel the world like the Good Brothers have, and you basically can write your own ticket, you kind of redefine professional wrestling in the year 2021. You appear on every television show. No, he's not gonna too sweet you, Carl. Not old home week with Nagata-san. You know, appearing on New Japan Strong, AEW, Impact Wrestling, all in the same year. I mean, pump handle on the arm. Nagata reacquaints himself with the big LG and puts Gallows down. Nagata understands, you know, what kind of opponents the Good Brothers are. So he's not wasting any time working on the arm of Carl Anderson. All right, now going to get Ren Narita back in. And boy, it is a fundamental approach. It is not flashy, but it is working. Control one body part, one in, one out. Double team when you can. Neither man stays in the ring for very long. Keep that advantage. Boy, you know, you're t we were talking about, and I think the obvious thing was Ren Narita, the risk of being isolated. But here we are with Gallows being, or with uh, Anderson being isolated. A little bit of a surprise, Alex. Yes, I mean, uh, Eugene Agata and Ren Narita have a really good game plan. They've been able to stay on top of Carl Anderson, but not for long as the big man, Doc Gallows, gets it. Well, Anderson had to go to the near the eyes, and now... 
the monster. Well, we got a collection of monsters on this New Japan Strong program. When you look at Brody King and J.R. Kratos and now Doc Gallows along with Hikaleo, there's a lot of mass on this roster as Gallows extends the leg and now the thrust into the throat on Yuji Nagata, the big LG in control. Doc Gallo is such an impressive big man. So powerful and so agile for his size. And how, oh man, here we go. Now opening up with this combination. Long looping punches. And Narita tried to fight out of that blue corner, but gets thrusted down. How important do you think this would be for the Good Brothers to come back to New Japan, Alex, and win Tag Team Turbulence? I think that the Good Brothers, I think it's their fate to win this tournament. I think that they are so confident in their abilities that they think it's theirs for the take. And this is not so much for them. This is to remind all of the fans of New Japan Pro Wrestling who the Good Brothers really are. And, you know, throughout the years, while Carl Anderson was away, oh, now he's mocking Nagata. That's only going to provoke... Yuji Nagata. Every time Carl got the opportunity to tweet about New Japan, he would always speak so fondly of it. And I know that he and Gallows really enjoyed their time. And no matter what they do in the world, whether it's AW Impact, I think New Japan always has that special place in their heart. Well, they've been on top in New Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling as part of the Bullet Club for so long. Five they dominated the scene. Minutes. Oh. It's their home. They are the housekeepers. And now, wait a minute. Let's see if Narita can kick out. He does at two. Wow. I think at the when the tournament field of eight was announced, and there's a shot on Narita on Nagata rather. I think when the tournament field was announced, Alex, if you gave people the choice, you could pick the Good Brothers or the Field. I think most fans would have chosen the Good Brothers to win this tournament. Now, the winner of this match will have to face Big Bad Brody King and Dirty Daddy Chris Dickinson. So that certainly isn't going to be easy for whomever does emerge. And I would say right now, Alex, it's looking pretty strongly that the Good Brothers will be the team to advance. Absolutely. And they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Isolating Ren Narita. Picking him apart as long as they keep, can keep him away from Yuji Nagata. I mean, he is, abs he is planted in that blue corner. They've completely cut the ring in half. That is Tag Team 101. And right now, the Good Brothers are showing exactly why they are one of the best teams in the world and have been so for a long time. And Narita trying to reach to the rope, finally able to get that rope. Unfortunately for Narita, he's still a long, long way from the red corner and the friendly tag he could make to Yuji Nagata, who is looking on with concern, realizing that the opportunity to make the finals of Tag Team Turbulence could be slipping away. Oh, what a knee to the forehead of Ren Narita. And a heavy elbow drop. They are picking Narita apart and a kick out at two. Kick out at two. It is almost getting to the point, Alex, where our referee, I'm sure it's in the back of his mind. Narita has to continue to fight. But man, oh man, I don't know if the, if Narita is going to be able to get out of this predicament. Now with Big LG hovering over his shoulders, dishing out continued punishing moves. Smashing him into the mat with the body slam. Oh, Narita rolls out of the way. All right, so Ren Narita now with an opportunity, with an opportunity. Can he get there? Yes, tag. See you, machine gun. He'll be back. Reversed. 
Fake out, fake out. Everybody falls for it. Oh, come on. What did Machine Gun well, do to deserve that? Gotta win the match, gotta win the match. Hey, and huge boot by the big bootski. Well, that's right, Carl Anderson about to. Yeah, we may not even favor. May not even get to Magic Killer. Gunsta! No, Nagata! Here comes Gallows! Exploder! Narita wants back in! Alright, so now let's see what Narita can do. Corner to corner, here he comes! And Nagata! I think Carl Anderson has eaten like six boots in the past two minutes. He's a cover! And almost. Slugfest on the floor, and I got it down hard. Rakes the eyes, does Carl Anderson. Oh, my God. This might do it. This should do it. And I got it with the save. Ten minutes have elapsed. Ten and minutes. And Doug Gallows gets rid of Nagata going after him. And now it's Carl Anderson and Ren Narita. I would say things are looking good for the Good Brothers. Here we go. Gunstun. Two. Oh. Hey, what in the world? Are you kidding me? I am shocked, Kevin. There's gonna be a little extra on this. It's magic killer time. And that will do it. The Good Brothers advancing to the finals time. of Tag Team Turbulence. 10 and 40 seconds. Here are your winners, advancing to the finals of the Tag Team Turbulence Tournament. Well, Doc Eugene Gallows Nagata and, and Ren Carl Rita Anderson, has, the have good certainly brothers. shown up to fight, but the Good Brothers prevail. So I could be rich. Once again, your winners. So your finals are set next week. It will be the Good Brothers. Machine Gun Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows against Violence Unlimited. Big Bad Brody King and Chris Dickinson. Amazing effort by Renderita. Take as much punishment as he did and still carry the fight. Still have enough to kick out of the gun stun. So who will win Tag Team Turbulence? We'll find out next week. But the strong open way titles up next in our main event. Can Satoshi Kojima unseat filthy Tom Lawler? We'll find out. Our main event coming up. Brody King, Brody King. Brody King, oh! Chris Dickinson, oh! Do you guys know who you're stepping in the ring with? Do you realize the legendary stuff we've done oh! in a shitty old pro wrestling ring? How many times have we gotta say it? The Machine Gun and the Big LG, man, the Good Brothers, we came out here for one reason, and that's to win this tournament. Violence Unlimited, Violence Unlimited, Violence Unlimited. That was poor word choice, boys. We've been watching you from afar as we've been gallivanting all over this world, uh -huh. staking claim to our rightful title as the greatest tag team ever to breathe. 
But yeah. violence unlimited is a bad word choice because we will bring the violence. The machine gun Carl Anderson, a Japanese bona fide professional wrestling legend. Keep it the coming. The big LG <laughs> Doc Ellis, the Keep best big man in the business. We are the good brothers, and as I've been saying the entire time, it's going to be that same old recipe in the tournament final of the T3. It's a magic killer, a one, two, three, and a just two. Sweet. Out. All right, keep up the hard work, guys. Hey, Royce, where's this one going? Parts unknown. Tokon Shop Global. We ship worldwide. Why, buddy? You finished those Okada orders yet? Yeah, with the new Team Filthy shirt, papi. Genius. Eso, mi gente. The stars of today and the legends of the past come together on your smartphone. NJPW Collection. Pick up cards from special draft events. Use your collected cards to form your own faction or exchange them for limited edition special cards. Check in live from venues or remotely from home to get special tickets and items. Add all of New Japan Pro Wrestling to your collection now. NJPW Collection. Trust me, you shake that hand, you're gonna pay the price, oh come on! Not content with just getting the victory, Filthy Tom Lawler and JR Kratos attacking. Come on, wait a minute, wait a minute, look oh, at this! Oh, and Kojima is out here trying to make the safe for Carl Fredericks. Thank God Kojima was here, watching on in the monitor in the back, and now, whoa, 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 Kojima had that strong arm loaded. Look, Lola, I'm next challenger. I will kick you out. Main event time. You want a big fight feel? You want a big fight atmosphere? You've got it right here with Satoshi Kojima. Going after the strong open weight championship. Kojima issuing the challenge to filthy Tom Lawler after Lawler had a successful defense against Carl Fredericks. So 50 years old, but still a kid. And man, oh man, that strong right arm, what an incredible weapon for Satoshi Kojima. Alex, do you think, do you feel that Kojima can get it done? Look, here's Kojima, you know, a, a, a man that's been doing this for so long, you know, a former IWGP oh. heavyweight champion, two times, seven time IWGP oh, tag team yeah. champion with Tenzin and Nakan Nakanishi. He's done it all, and he's trying to recapture some of that past glory. He thinks he can do it. He's coming to New Japan Strong to challenge the number one guy, the man that is Tom Lawler. Yes, he's got a dangerous weapon, his most dangerous weapon, that is the Lariat, the same move that he beat most recently with J.R. Kratos. So he's certainly, if he connects with the Lariat, he will beat Tom Lawler. But will he be able to connect? That is the question. Yeah, and I, I think that's the very simple answer. Can he? Well, of course, he wouldn't be in the ring. He wouldn't be Satoshi Kojima if he couldn't. But will he? Oh, man. Team Filthy represented. The aforementioned J.R. Kratos will be the corner man of the first and only strong open weight champion, Filthy Tom Lawler. And you know, Lawler won the new Lawler won the New Japan Cup USA tournament. Excuse me, Alex. Just 
refreshing our fans' memories, Lawler won the New Japan Cup USA Tournament to become the first strong openweight champion. Another challenger. Can Lawler knock him down? Yeah, and the, the people that Tom Lawler went through to become the first New Japan Strong Champion, he went through guys like Ikuleo. He beat the biggest monsters in New Japan Strong. Ikuleo, and in the main event of that tournament, he beat Brody King. He submitted the monster Brody King. He has single-handedly beat the biggest monsters on this roster. We can, in some way, we can call him a true monster. But of course we can't, because he has the best strut in the business. He's cool, he's filthy, and his trademark denim style. Tom Lawler is a true danger in New Japan Strong. And he has brought true, real prestige to this title. And of course, the denim shorts the exterior, of course, denim shorts underneath the denim jacket. And now, apparently, his mixed martial arts career uh, is you know, retirement in MMA is always a tricky thing. But if filthy Tom Lawler dedicates all of his energy, time and effort into professional wrestling with the success that he's already had, just being relatively part time, my God. The heights to which Filthy Tom Lawler can go. He's offering bread to Kojima. That, what is that this? That is honestly the nicest gesture that one competitor can, can do for another. Whoa. Well, Kojima's not messing around. Don't bring Bread Cup Club into this. I think that he offered him a loaf of bread to let him know, like, hey, you probably are not going to have much to eat after I beat you in this finals match. But here's some bread Lawler anyway. Or even... Yeah, Lawler's throwing his uh, elbow sleeve, which he just wore to try to mock it under the skin of Kojima a little bit. Kojima with the waist lock and a roll up. And Lawler gets his shoulders up. Kojima, product of the New Japan Dojo, won the Young Lions Cup, beat Manabu Nakanishi in the finals back in 94. And went on to, of course, the career heights you documented. Coming back after time away from New Japan to win the G1 as an outsider, something that had never been done before. Becoming the IWGP heavyweight champion, holding uh, similar titles in all Japan. The man literally has done it all, except beat Filthy Tom Lawler this, their first singles meeting. That's right. Kojima has absolutely done it all. He was ranked number three of the top 500 singles wrestlers in the PWI 500. But that was in 2005, and we're in 2021, and the lay of the land yes. has changed. And it is Tom Lawler who's the king of the jungle. And he's not the number three guy. He is the number one guy. And Chris Dickinson found out the hard way, didn't he? Brody King yeah. and Hikaleo uh -huh. found out Here the hard go. way, didn't they? Do you get paid by the word, by Lawler, to put him over? Is that how the deal works with this? I don't have to put over Tom Lawler. Tom Lawler's work puts himself over. Well, I'll agree with you there. He's as good as it, as good as it gets. As Kojima escapes and with his back to the ropes. Now, Kojima with a watchful eye. Kojima has definitely a weapon that can beat any opponent that he faces. If he can connect with that lariat. But how does he connect with that lariat? He has to catch Tom Lawler out of nowhere. He has to stun him temporarily, but with the cat-like reflexes of Tom Lawler, I'm not sure how he'll be able to do that. How about that peck popping right there? He's got some great pecs, no doubt about it. And Lawler catches him coming in. So would you, would you disagree with me that any fighter can beat any fighter on any given day? Of course. Any given day. Okay, so Lawler can be beat. Lawler can be beat, but Lawler... And Kojima, Kojima has... It's a one-punch knockout artist, right? It's the Lariat. Right. So Kojima has that puncher's chance of beating filthy Tom Lawler. Of course, Kojima has a puncher, puncher's chance, just like anybody. But when you look at Tom Lawler and all the weapons in his arsenal... Look at the way he's picking Kojima apart right now. Look at the way he's bending the arm backwards, ripping those fingers off their joints. Look at the way he is so dangerous on the ground and standing. He has so many weapons, which makes him more likely to be able to take the victory. 
I would agree with you it's there. It's all statistics, I think Kevin. No, no, I'm not arguing with you. I think Filthy Tom Lawler does come in as the favorite to successfully defend this title against Satoshi Kojima. But Kojima, even though you say, oh, you know, he's back in 05, he was great. It's 2021. In 2021, we can't forget about the fact that on January the 30th, Kojima battled Will Ospreay to a near standstill in a no disqualification war that involved chairs and tables and ladders and everything. And Kojima was there, punch for punch, move for move, with one of the world's best in Osprey. I'm not trying to say that this is gonna be an easy uh, walk in the park for Tom Lawler. Kojima knows how to fight, he's very experienced. He's been in tough competitions before, throughout his whole career. He can hang. But with a guy like Tom Lawler, who is on top of his game, he's so sharp, he's so dangerous, he is ready for anything that you will throw his way. Now, this looks a, like a very basic move, but this could be the end of the match right here, Alex, oh, absolutely. right? absolutely. The way that he traps his arm and applies pressure against his own neck, cutting off the blood. Follows up with the body slam, and Filthy Tom Lawler can move in several directions here. Which direction will he choose? Hits the ropes, comes forward, misses with the elbow. May have taken a little bit of too much time. And now Kojima goes to the outside. Going to look to slingshot in, but nobody home for his elbow drop. Five minutes. And five minutes into this strong open weight championship battle, Lawler now dragging Kojima to the outside. A little greedy, don't you think, of Kojima to, to think that he can come to New Japan strong and take the title off of Tom Lawler? I mean, with everything that he's done, where does he get the goal to come to New Japan strong and think that he can take this from Tom Lawler? Well, Tom Lawler did not have to accept Kojima's challenge. New Japan Pro Wrestling matchmakers did not have to make this a title match. The count is being applied as Kojima's left arm is being stretched and bent around the ring post. 13. And the count's at 13 and now 14. 15. Lawler taking his time for some Persian club exercise and now rolling it at 16. He's confident he's going to win and retain his title via count out. Kojima answers though underneath that bottom row. Barely makes it in in time. So far, J.R. Kratos, J.R. Kratos looming on the outside. No physical involvement at all, and we don't expect any. Now looking for a figure four leg lock. A figure four leg lock from Tom Lawler. And if he can get the leg over the ankle of Kojima, and Kojima's trying to block it, because once he is able to hook his leg, and he does, the amount of uh -oh. pressure that you feel against your, that shin, that right shin of Kojima, it is excruciating pain. There are two ways out. One is to get a rope break, which Kojima just did. Number two, turn the hold over and reverse it. It reverses the pressure of the figure four. Kojima, though, took the brunt of it and now is in deep trouble. Filthy Tom Lawler can pick his poison here. Oh! And so far, he's been picking Kojima apart, working on his arm, working on his leg, and now they're standing. And we know how dangerous Tom Lawler is standing. Uh, I had a feeling Lawler was going this way. Don't get cute, Sunshine. Machine gun chops of his own, mocking Kojima. I don't think Kojima likes the way that this is feeling. Oh! Knocking Kojima to his knee. How do you like that, Kojima? Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. That's how you fire the machine gun chops. Now, filthy Tom Lawler is in agony. Now, you know, Kojima, you know, is not a better striker than um, Tom Lawler, but he has a background in judo. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. Listen. Can't forget the Ichizo bad word. Now Kojima's gonna go to the top rope. He's gonna come down like a block of cement into the chest of Lawler, but Lawler on his feet. I'll tell you what, Lawler is a student of the game. He knows 
every intricacy, every move that his opponent is going to make, even a veteran, a legend like Satoshi Kojima. He does his homework. A look at the way that he caught Kojima there, hanging on the top rope, driving those knees into the sternum of Kojima. Yeah, that sends Kojima down on the apron of the ring, and referee Jeremy Marcus making sure that Kojima is fit to continue. You can see the reddened chest of our strong open weight champion after all those machine gun chops. Lawler is making Kojima pay for cursing earlier. Yeah, right. And now got the rear naked choke applied. Of course, Kojima on the exterior of the ring. This can't lead to a stoppage, but it certainly can affect Kojima's wits. And now Lawler is going to go out to the apron of the ring. Careful here, Tom. This is a dangerous part yeah. of the, the ring. This is a risk that Lawler does not need to take at this point. And Kojima... Oh, drives the elbow. Watch out. Oh, this is no. dangerous. He dropped it. The DD, DDT. On the most dangerous part of the ring. Now, that is not good news for Tom Lawler. That will knock you silly. One, that is a, a mistake two, there by Lawler, one that he rarely three, makes. But he four, left Kojima with the ability... Five, for the counter move, and Six. Kojima did not miss. Seven. Tell you what, fans, the resurgence of live events for New Japan Pro Wrestling Ten. is getting ready August 11. 14th. Oh, Whoa. my goodness, the torch at L.A. Coliseum. Ten. Tickets are Ten. on sale Ten. now. Ten. All the stars you see here on Strong, plus John Boxley, Switchblade Jay White, and more. NJPW1972.com for tickets and information. Kojima now, top rope elbow drop. My goodness, cover two and a kick out. Then two nights later, the first live strong taping with fans in attendance. We cannot wait. Thunder Studios in Long Beach. Again, tickets available right now. They're on sale. Information, go to njpw1972.com and don't you dare miss it. Kojima trying to pick up Tom Lawler, but Tom Lawler hold, holding on to the leg and able to get the upper hand here with a couple of attacks, forearms on Kojima. Look how versatile Tom Lawler is. Kicks. Mixing left, the kicks right. and the punches, yep. Kevin, I cannot wait. We're going live. New Japan Strong is going live. I cannot wait. Live at Resurgence, it is going to be an atmosphere. Filthy Tom Lawler will be there, but will he still be the strong open weight champion? Don't jinx it, Kevin, please. He's not a pitcher throwing a no-hitter. Boy, Lawler is really fancying himself as a chop expert. That may not be the best weapon that he has, but it's the direction that he's chosen here. Goes for the boot. Kojima catches. Hammers down on the leg. Oh, bringing a little Tenzan into the mix. How about those Mongolian chops? Drives him into the mat. Cover. Two. And a kick out. Well, yeah, as you've noticed. Oh, look at this. The Anaconda oh, Vice. He's got it. He's got the Anaconda Vice. We said Kojima was a one-punch knockout artist with the Lariat, but he's using Tenzon's submission hold, the Anaconda Vice. How many championships G1s has Tenzon won with this move? It looks like he's borrowed a few weapons from his old friends. I'm sure Tenzon has a big smile on his face as he's watching this championship bout, seeing his old friend Kojima on the doorstep of the strong open weight title with the Anaconda Vice. Almost a dedication to Tenzon, but Lawler gets the boot on the bottom rope. And you can tell that Tom Lawler has slowed down, slowed down a little bit ever since he took that DDT on that apron. The tides have turned a little bit. The strong open weight championship, that's the prize here. Will Lawler be unseated? 
He was the first, the inaugural, strong open weight champion. Can Satoshi Kojima claim the crown? Koji Cutter! Lawler's in the center of the ring. Lawler looks like his head is spinning. He does not know where he is. This is when oh. Kojima can take advantage and execute Here that we layer. Go. Will he be Here able we go. to? Here we go. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Kojima has him lined up. Swing, miss, no. Couldn't connect with the lariat. Now, Lawler with the rear naked choke. Nakojima is a background in judo and is able to use it here, slamming Tom Lala over his shoulder. And now gonna swing. No, again couldn't connect. And this is the second Up time. On shoulders. Second time that Tom Lawler had an answer for the Lariat. Moving out of the way. One, two, two, and a kick wow, out. What a close call. Lawler had driven Lawler had driven Kojima into the mat. And look at that tight front face lock. That is not your ordinary front face lock when it's Tom Lawler applying it. Yeah, no, this is a, a submission move in the stand-up. And again, referee Jeremy Marcus is right there, seeing if Kojima is losing consciousness, seeing if he is going to tap out. Well, if he drops his hands, that'll be a signal to the referee that he might be done. But Tom Lawler attempts oh, a, a suplex, but Kojima attempts one of his own. And got a brain buster. Down goes Lawler. Where did Kojima got the energy to do that? Here's the cover. Here's the oh. cover, too. Oh. Wow. All right, so now Kojima lining it up, lining it up. Wait, wait a minute. Come oh, on. it appears as though Kojima tripped when he ran no, the rope. He... Damn it. JR Kratos clubbed Kojima from I behind. I did not see Lawler that, Kevin. takes advantage. Well, it obvious. It was apparent. And now Kojima is being choked out here. The referee didn't see it. Oh, Kojima's going. Kojima's going. Lawler's got... Uh, yeah, Lawler's got it. That is it. He's not going to answer. Call for the bell. That's it. Kojima's out. Time. 16 minutes and... Very, seconds. very impressive. A well-earned victory by Tom Lawler. Champion, holding on to the title. Tom Lawler! I wish the camera was on us. You'd see the look of disgust on my face. I think that Kojima tripped when he tried to run uh, using the momentum off that Come rope on, for the Larry. I think he tripped. He got too excited. You know damn well what happened. I think you're making so a bunch of Lawler. assumptions. Yeah, I mean, I'm, an, I'm an assumer, right. Okay, well, Filthy Tom Lawler won. I hope you're happy. I hope Team Filthy is happy. Oh. But in his heart of hearts, Tom Lawler knows that he couldn't beat Satoshi Kojima without J.R. Kratos' oh, help. Oh, my God. Those are big statements, Kevin Kelly. Those are fighting words. You don't want to be saying things like that around Team Filthy, especially with J.R. Kratos in that ring right now. Please, be careful. Okay. This is Team Filthy time. Tom Lawler has proved why he is the number one guy here at New Japan Strong. Look at that belt. Beautiful. Beautiful. It just goes so well with the skin tone of Tom Lawler. Well, it's an open weight championship. That means heavyweights, junior heavyweights can challenge. I wonder who will be next to step up and challenge the strong open weight champion, Filthy Tom Lawler. Oh yeah, Alex loves this tune. Folks, next week, the finals of Tag Team Turbulence. It'll either be Violence Unlimited, Big Bad Brody King, Chris Dickinson, or the Good Brothers. Machine Gun Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows. You have to be here next week to see who wins Tag Team Turbulence, the place, New Japan Strong. And we will see you next week. Get out of here.
It's like I got three eyes back there. Get him on here. Get your, get your ass that. out of the way. I don't want to see that. Man. Did Take it again. a look. Beautiful. Damn. Are you kidding me? Don't, don't hit it too hard. Right? Come on. Oh, easy, easy. First. First it was the tournament. Then the dirty daddy. <laughs> Not filthy enough. Call Fredericks. I mean, his day might come. I probably not. Yeah, probably not. But maybe. But it ain't now. He sure gonna is. learn. He gonna learn today. And now a legend, Satoshi Kojima, has fallen at the hands of the strongest in New Japan, Filthy Tom. What's next? What's next for the New Japan Strong Open Weight Champion? Huh? What's it gonna be? Is it gonna be? Ah, uh, we got Bob Sapp out of retirement. <laughs> Shit. I mean. Yeah. I'd be, yeah. You'd get him. Me, uh, I don't know. We're going to get some minuscule freak like Ant-Man who can get bigger and smaller. Is it going to be an octopus? What? What, a mop? Yeah, <laughs> are you it's kidding me? It's going to be a mop. The fuck? Oh, Kratos, come on. Way to go. Gentlemen, I think you said something about a moth, if I'm not mistaken. No, he did. He well, did. look no further than the man of the hour. He said it. Leo Rush. Pleasure to meet you, Tom. Oh, I know the resume. I <laughs> also know what you got around your shoulder. I'm pretty sure you know exactly who I am. We were in the same tournament together, if you can remember. <laughs> well, did you watch the finals? I did watch the finals. Yes, but, uh, not impressed, if you ask me. See, ever since I stepped foot in New Japan Pro Wrestling, I haven't quite gotten my fair shake when it comes to these tournaments. So if you are a uh, fighting champion, which it looks like you are, I am, right. yeah, how he's, about he's you put that smart. title on the line if you want a real challenge? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. I like your jean shorts, by the way. Thanks. You know where to find me, gentlemen. 